Hello, and welcome to Flow Hub Maui. Today, I will be walking through butt tender training. First thing is to log into Flow Hub Maui. Your manager will establish an email and a role for you. Check your email for a temporary password and a temporary PIN. It looks something like this. The first time you log in, the system will ask you to reset your password. You can reset your PIN at any time once you get logged in. Please see the Help Hub article linked in this video to get help resetting your PIN. Be sure to keep your password and PIN confidential. Your PIN number is important because this is what determines if you have the permission to do certain actions in FlowHub. Okay, you're logged in, now what? In the upper left corner, you will see an option to select cashier. When you select cashier, you will see a menu open on the left. You might not see all of these options depending on your role. The first place you wanna go is drawers. This is where you're going to open and close drawers every day. Be sure to talk to your supervisor to see exactly how they want you to fill out this information. Any notes that you leave will populate on the drawer activity report. Once a drawer is open, you can see I'm automatically assigned to it and I can assign others to this drawer as well. There's also some options on the right. Let's go ahead and make a drop. A drop is moving money around the dispensary. For example, you have too much cash in the cash register up front, so you're moving it to the safe in the back. Make sure to enter a reason and your PIN number in order to submit this. The other option is a payout. A payout looks very similar to a drop, however it will affect your daily revenue. I like to think of it as payout out the door, the money is leaving the dispensary, and you're using it to pay some sort of bill or your employee's lunch, things like that. You can see if I go back into Count and Close, it does keep track of the payout and the drop, as well as shows me my new expected count that the drawer should have. You might not see the expected count based off of your role and your permissions. You might have a blind close, which means you won't be able to see exactly how much your drawer should have. You just need to blindly count your money and close your drawer. Now that you have a drawer open, we can make a sale. First, let's check somebody into queue. We're gonna to go to customers on the left. There are a few different ways to check in customers. This is only one of the ways. There is a search bar at the top of the screen that you can use, and you can also create a new customer on the screen by clicking new customer in the upper right corner. Once you find your customer, you'll select their name, then select check in on the right. You can see once I select check in, they're now in queue and it's keeping track of their waiting time. Now when I select customers and go to cashier, you'll see I have this customer currently waiting to be checked out by a bud tender. I can also search for a customer on this screen and check them in to the queue, or I can create a new customer from this screen by clicking new customer in the bottom left corner. The final place to check in a customer or create a new customer is via the Greet app that can be downloaded to your iPhone. This is a monthly subscription, so you might not have access to it. Reach out to FlowHub or your FlowHub representative to find more information about this app. All right, so let's make a sale. I'll select the customer I'm working with on the left and it will pull up their profile. You can see there's customer notes, purchase habits, and top categories across the top of your screen. Customer notes are internal facing only, and the customer won't see these unless you turn the computer screen around. You can use purchase habits and top categories to help upsell the customer. Maybe this customer always gets a pre-roll, but today they haven't gotten one. You can see that information in purchase habits and top categories. In the upper right corner, you can see their loyalty points, you can sell a gift card. You can edit their customer profile. Return to queue pushes somebody back to the queue. Let's say Snoop Dogg wasn't ready to make a purchase yet. I can push him back to queue and work with the next customer. And then customer left just marks this customer leaving without purchasing anything. Now to add items to the cart. You can select a category and it will filter the items. 
When you select the plus button, it adds items to the cart. You might not see the plus button depending on your store's settings. If you do not see the plus button, you will then be required to scan a barcode in order to add items to a cart. Once items are added to a cart, you'll see there are additional options. You can add a product discount. This would discount only this product, and it does require a pin. Your pin might not work depending on your permissions. As you can see, this discount applied only to this product. I can also remove items from a cart or print the labels from here. I can apply loyalty points at this stage. This would act as a discount if they are a loyalty member. You can see the loyalty points will be applied to all of the items in the cart with the option to remove if I decide to. At the top of the screen on the right, you will see the cannabis counter. The cannabis counter varies by state and sometimes med versus rec customers. If you go over the cannabis counter, it won't let you move forward and check out a customer. Now we can check this customer out by scrolling down to the bottom and selecting collect payment. On the left, you'll see a snapshot of the cart, what they're purchasing, and the cannabis counter. In the middle section, you'll see close payment, which will allow you to add more items to the cart, or uh, select a drawer. If you're assigned multiple drawers, you'll need to select which drawer you are currently on. In the middle here, we would just enter how much cash they've given us or the debit amount, and then we would enter our four digit PIN. This PIN number tracks exactly who performed this action. If you put in the incorrect PIN, you'll get an invalid PIN number. This is the screen you'll see after a sale is complete. Receipts will automatically print if that's how your hardware is set up. You can also email a receipt. If an email address is associated to the customer and on the customer profile, this won't be a blank field and it will fill in automatically with their email. Here's an example of what emailed receipts look like. To view a sale that has been made, you'll go to the cashier tab and then sales across the purple bar at the top. This is where you can find previous sales and report them to metric or see if they've been reported to metric. You can also see all of the details on the right side. We also have the ability to refund, void, edit the sale, download this as a CSV, push this to metric, or reprint the receipts, exit labels, or email the receipt. Let's go ahead and do a refund. You'll see here, I can add items to the cart that we would like to refund. We can also select the box that says return to inventory. I can then move forward and refund these items, or I can add other items to the cart that maybe they're exchanging. As you can see, we are taking back the concentrate one gram and we are selling a different concentrate one gram. Customer owes $1.67 and we'll enter all of the information in here like we did previously. Now you can see that the refund was successful and the sale was successful. When I go back to the sales tab, you will see the original sale we made, the refund, and then the new sale that we made. The edit button on the right side allows you to change who you sold this product to or the payment method. Maybe you entered it as cash and it really needed to be card. The other options on the right are push, which would allow you to push this one line item to metric, Download, which would allow you to download this one line item as a CSV. We also have print receipt, exit labels, and email receipt. Across the top, we have a filter, so you can select start and end date, as well as reporting status. I definitely recommend using reporting status to figure out exactly what sales you need to report before you use the actions button and bulk push. You can download as a metric CSV and then upload into metric, or you can bulk push if you have a metric API key associated to your account. Okay, you did it. That was all for bud tender training. Now there might be some more information that your manager or supervisor wants you to know, but these are the basics. We encourage you to log in, ask questions, and reach out if you have any questions. Welcome to Paradox. <laughs>